Hi, uh, Centilla Quacks here. Um, today I thought we'd have another look at an algorithm. So I've just saved this file uh, as squirt.py. Um, it's going to calculate the square root of a number. And we're going to use the algorithm of Heron of Alexandria. Which is quite a neat way to do it. So before we start the main part of the program, it's going to define a couple of uh, functions, which we'll just test out in a moment. So the first one is going to be, well, let's just call it a sum list. Um, so the first one is going to take an average of a list of numbers. So I'll put a little dot string in. First thing I'm going to do is set a temporary variable to zero. I'm going to use that as my count as my total. So for item in some list, temp plus equals item. Um, and then outside of the for loop, I'm going to return temp divided by len some list. Okay, so that should do the job for the average. There's one other function I want to write as well, just to start with, which is absolute. So you may have come across this before, um, and it just finds the absolute value of a number. Um, there is actually a built-in for this in the maths module, but I'm going to just write my own for now. Return absolute value. So um, if num less than zero, whoops, return minus num. So if it's a minus number, it's going to turn it into a positive number. And if it's a positive number or zero, we don't need to do anything to it. It's fine. Okay. So, if I just open up my shell, and import those functions in, if I try average, uh, so it's telling me there that I need to enter a list of numbers and, and it will give me the average, so if I try just doing something very simple like 5, so 6, it tells me average 5 and a half, so that seems to be working alright. Let's try one more just in case just to show that it works with more than two numbers. Okay, so the average of that is three. Then I want to just check that absolute is working. So that takes the number and, and returns the absolute value. So if I put in six, it's going to tell me, yep, yeah, that's six. If I put in minus six, it should throw back a six. So it just gets rid of uh, uh, any negative numbers and, and turns them into positives. Okay, so the way we're actually going to do this um, in the main part of the program is uh, by sort of doing a recursive um, function. So I'll write the function that function now. So. Um, so we're going to write this function. It's going to take an estimate for what the square root might be. It's going to take the number x that we're looking for the square root of, and it's going to take an error, which is the margin of error. So we're going to not necessarily we have to find the um, we have to find the actual square root, but we might be able to get very close to it if it's if it's a tricky one. So.
So what I'm actually going to do now before we go on and write the rest of that function is I'm just going to set a couple of variables at the top, well one variable actually at the top here so, um, so that the user doesn't have to worry about this too much. So I'm going to say error equals 0.1. Okay, so I'm going to put in quite a lot of zeros there. Um, I think I've put in 9, hopefully. 1, 2, 3, five, Yeah, so that's going to give us quite a good margin for error. You've noticed there I've put a capital, I've put that in capitals because that's going to be like a, a constant in this um, in this program. So, actually before I write that function it might be a good idea for me to write the, the main part of the program as well just and then we can actually tackle that in a moment so what I'm going to put is I'm going to do this same thing that I did before just so that I can play around with some of these uh, functions without calling the whole um, getting the program to run so if name is main I'm going to run the rest of these things and then I'm going to go for a while true, so it's going to be a kind of infinite loop here until um, until the user exits the program. Um, choice equals input. Whoops, the square root of and then I'm going to just check to see if the user's entered a number. Try num equals float, oh sorry, choice, let's just stick with that, not cloat. <laughs> so if that works then we know that the user wants to keep going and, and we're using a number. Um, if uh, that doesn't work then we're going to break which will just exit that that loop. So that just means that if the user decides to put a, something else that isn't a number in it, it will just exit the program. So it's sort of a very simple way of doing it. So if that happens, we're going to if, if we've got this far, then we're going to print the square root um, of the number, and the estimate's going to be one because it works if you always use one as your estimate. Then choice, which is the choice, and then uh, which is our constant that we've chosen for an error. So back in the body of the of the function, um, I'm, I'm referring to that as a small with a small r. E, sorry, e double e double r in small letters, just to show that I'm not using the uh, I'm not using a global variable there. I'm just I'm just passing that in. Okay. So the first thing that I want to do is check to see if um, the estimate is the square root. So check val. I'm going to call this equals and then the estimate, times the estimate, so I'll square the estimate and see if that um, and then I'll, I'll subtract x from that so that will give me the difference between the the square of my estimate and um, the number that I'm trying to find uh, the square root of. So then I want to do this thing where I just just to sort of save uh, making this overly complicated, I'm going to get the absolute value of check val. So now I'm not worried about whether it's uh, negative or positive, it's just going to be a positive v version of that. And if that is less than uh, the error that I'm working on, then we can return because we've got close enough. Okay. So if that isn't the case, then what we're going to do is we're going to say the new estimate is the average of, excuse me, um, and then we've got to put this as a list. So we're going to go for the average of the estimate and x, which is the number that we started off with, divided by the estimate. I'll just show you in a minute how that works. So that's that. That's our that's our method for finding bridge. So I'll just show you a, a 
closer a closer version. So if we start off with two, just to give you an idea of what we're looking for here, if we guess that one might be the square root of two, um, so we say, okay, well, is one times one, uh, what's the difference between one times one and two? So, so if we don't, obviously, the difference, the difference is one. So, but just so that you, you know, so that so my difference there is one. So that that would be my my new estimate. Sorry, my new estimate has got to be based on that. So it's, I'm going to take an average of one plus the original number, which was 2, divided by 1. So that comes out as 3, but then I'm taking the average of that. So if I take that, so, if, so obviously now I'm at 1.5. So that is actually quite a lot closer uh, to the square root of 2. So if I do square root 1.5 times 1.5, I'm now getting 2.25, OK? So it's closer, but it's not good enough. So now what I would do is I'd say, OK, well, my next guess is going to be 1.5 plus 2 divided by 1.5. So that's the, the total of those two. Uh, so I need to divide that by 2. Oh, I should have done that straight away, but <coughs> let's go for A equals 1.5. Plus 2 divided by 1.5. So that's those two together. Um, and then if I do a divided by 2, so that's my, my next best guess at the, at the square root of 2. So we're getting closer to the square root of 2, and that is how this algorithm works. Okay, so of course, what we need to do now is pass that new estimate. Um, that new estimate back into the function, so it's, it's a recursive function. So I'm going to return the square root of the new estimate that we've got. Sorry, I don't need that first bracket. So it's the new estimate. It's the same x and it's the same error. Okay. So if we uh, have a look at this program now. Um, see if it's working, if I haven't made any horrible mistakes. Oh, that's because I've made a mistake there. <laughs> I should say name. Okay, so it's going to ask me for the square root of a number, so if I pop in 9, it's going to tell me 3. Um, if I ask if I ask it for the square root of um, something a bit more tricky like uh, two, which we're working with four, it's going to give me that. Um, if I ask for the square root of let's say 99, it'll give me that. So one thing that you might want to do, and if I type in a Q or something, it'll just exit the program. One thing that you might want to do uh, when you're doing this is actually have a look at um, what the estimates are. Uh, as we go through this. So if I put in there print est and then we run that. So if I now put in 2 it shows you how it's getting closer and closer there to uh, what it thinks is a reasonable answer. It's obviously printed the answer out twice. Um, if I go for let's say 25 you can see that it's getting closer and closer each time so it's uh, until it finally gets to something that it thinks is near enough to 5 that it doesn't even bother printing the rest of the decimal places. That's just partly to do with the way that uh, Python prints out um, floating point numbers. Okay, so that is just another example of a little um, recursive function um, which calculates the, the square root of a number using a, a nice little algorithm. Um, I hope you found that useful um, and uh, stay tuned for some more tutorials.